Hello everyone. This is exam 3, topic 7, trigonometric substitution. Um, it'll be part 1, I'm sure, because it's going to take a lot to get through all of this. Um, first off, in order to understand the method that I am proposing for trigonometric substitution, we need to make sure we understand the Pythagorean theorem completely um, in terms of the following. When we have a right triangle, of course, we know that the hypotenuse, I'm going to label that as Z, and label the horizontal leg X and the vertical leg Y. Um, we know that the hypotenuse squared, Z squared, is the sum of the squares of the legs, so X squared plus Y squared. The important thing is that if we solve for the hypotenuse, Z, that's going to be, we'll take the principal or positive square root because it's a right triangle, so none of the lengths are going to be negative, of x squared plus y squared. So, therefore, if this is a sum of two squares under the radical, then the radical part must be e, which is the hypotenuse. And then the legs could be x and y, as we've illustrated. The other situation is if you have, let's say, the radical part being one of the legs. The only way that that can happen, let's say, if let's say it lets out for y, for example, we'd have to transpose the x squared. and then take the principal or positive square root. So therefore, if it's a difference between the two squares under the radical, then the radical part must have been a leg. But moreover, the hypotenuse is going to be z. So that will be the positive term that's under the radical. So those things are imperative to understand. And what I've written here is the three possible situations that we can come up with. Either a sum of two squares, a difference of two squares of the form a squared minus u squared, or a difference of two squares of the form u squared minus a squared. And always remember, just like with integrating things that result in inverse in our inverse trig functions, that A is the real or the constant, and U is the variable or the function of X. So I wrote the note here. Each of these radicals result from corresponding right triangles with the reference angle of theta. So let's draw the three corresponding triangles. So the first one. Okay. Based on what we discussed here with the Pythagorean theorem, since this is a sum of two squares under the radical, we're going to make the radical part the hypotenuse. And then u and a would be the legs. And you can label them any way you want, but I'm going to suggest labeling U opposite. Let me claim my reference angle theta here. And I'm going to claim U to be opposite of theta and A to be adjacent to theta. And we'll see why in the future. So that's the corresponding triangle when we have a radical part that looks like that is the sum of two squares. Now the corresponding triangle when we have a radical that's the difference of two squares. Well, as we saw here, if it's a difference, that radical part is going to be a leg. But moreover, let me label theta as well, but moreover, the positive term under the radical is going to be the hypotenuse. So therefore, in this case, A is the hypotenuse. And I always look, like to fill in the hypotenuse first, and you'll see that as we go through our examples. And then you could arbitrarily label u 
and the radical part as the other two sides. And we're going to suggest to label the radical part opposite, and you'll see this Y through example. And label the radical part opposite, and that means that you would have to be the adjacent. And then for the final triangle, similar to the previous, with respect to the fact that it's a difference between two squares, so therefore the radical part is a leg, but moreover the positive term under the radical again is the hypotenuse, and in this case that's you. And to be consistent, let's make the radical part opposite, and that would mean that A would be the adjacent. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have to be able to get those triangles correct. And then comes the procedure. Well, first off, the idea. We're going to convert an algebraic integral. And actually, let's start. We'll show the um, integral that we're talking about here. It's on the next page as we work through the procedure. We're going to convert an algebraic integral, so here's an algebraic integral, into a trigonometric integral. Um, then we're going to be able to use what we've learned from um, the previous lessons to, it be, to integrate that um, new trigonometric integral. So some of the steps here are, you know, if you look at this procedure, it looks exhaustive, um, but it, and it's a nice little cookbook recipe. Um, but really, these are the two major steps. I labeled them off to the side here. These are meant to be Roman numerals. So if you want to, uh, Roman numeral 1 and Roman numeral 2. Um, those are the two major steps. But let's work through these steps um, as we consider this example. We're going to choose U and A appropriately. And we're used to doing that, right? Like we said earlier, A is the constant, or the real number, U is the variable, or the function of X, and we're only going to focus on the radical. One thing you have to realize about this method is you don't really consider, in, initially, you don't consider the entire integral, like you're not really concerned about what the entire integral is made up of yet. You're only going to be concerned about the radical part. So under the radical, we can see we have the form a squared minus u squared, where a squared is, let me move this over a little bit because I want to be able to fit the triangle in nicely. So let me move my a squared over a little bit. So a squared is 4, and u squared is x squared. Never negative. The negative is going to dictate... How our triangle is constructed. Okay, just like before, principal positive square root, a would be 2, u would be x. We don't calculate the du because we're going to change this to a trigonometric integral. We immediately go to a right triangle and claim our reference angle theta. And then the crucial part, once again, is making sure we label the sides of the triangle correctly. There's three things to the sides of the triangle. The radical part, U, and A. And based on the nature of the radical part, just like we considered here, we have to place everything appropriately. So I suppose you could use this as a reference, but to work through this without, you know, looking back, I would ask the question, and I always like to shoot for the hypotenuse first. First question we could ask is, does the radical part represent the hypotenuse or one of the legs? And the answer is, because it's a difference between two squares, the radical part is a leg. And moreover, the hypotenuse is going to be the uh, value of, in this case, A, because that's the positive term. So I label the hypotenuse as 2. You could arbitrarily label these, but I'm going to make the radical part, um, I would just say, 
and you'll see through other examples the reason why. Just to be consistent like I did up here, when you have a radical as a leg, make it the opposite side with respect to theta. And that means that u is x, the adjacent side. Okay, so that's actually step one and two. Um, we chose u and a, that was easy, we knew, did that before. And then we made the triangle, okay? And we declared the reference angle theta. Here are the two major steps. First, establish a trig function. So this is the way I like to do it. Roman numeral one. You establish a trig function. We're going to define a trig function here. Don't even think about what it's going to be. Just force it to be the ratio every single time of the radical part over the constant. So that's what I wrote here. Establish a trig function in terms of theta. That's the ratio of the radical part over the constant. And solve for the radical part. Well, first, what trig function is that? Well, with respect to theta, the radical part's the opposite. 2 is the hypotenuse, so that's the sine of theta. And then we solve for the radical part. So 2 sine of theta is the radical part. Okay, we're done with that step for now. Second major step. So when I'm labeling this Roman numeral 2 here. Again, you don't even think about the trig function that you're about to define. In this step, you always force, just like I've written here, the ratio. You make the trig function that is the ratio. So I'm going to write whatever trig function this defines, but it's always u over a. So in this case, x over 2. So that's what I said. Establish a trig function in terms of theta. That is the ratio of the algebraic part u over the constant a. Every single time, u over a. With respect to theta, x is the adjacent, 2 is the hypotenuse, and that's the cosine of theta. And then we're going to solve for x. So x is equal to 2 cosine of theta. But something very crucial now. Step 5 is to calculate the differential dx. See, the whole idea here is that we're going to take this, trig, this algebraic integral and turn it into trig functions. And every factor of this integrand has to be accounted for. So far, we've accounted for x to the fifth, because here is x, but we're going to have to raise it to the fifth, but no big deal. We've accounted for the radical part. Here it is in terms of sine of theta, 2 sine of theta. But the most important thing is the differential dx. So when you get to Roman numeral step 2, make sure that at that point you calculate the differential dx. And the derivative of cosine is minus sine, so we'll write minus 2 sine of theta. And I left a little space in there because formally, and please pay attention to the fine details, when we take the differential, we have to, the derivative, and we're writing it in differential form, you have to tag along d theta. Okay, and then we're done with this basic procedure that is going to allow us now to make a complete trigonometric substitution. You can see that's what I said in the next step. And then I made a little note here about uh, changing the variables and replacing dx to be in terms of the differential d theta. That's very important. Um, and then I just wrote finish. So let's see how the rest of this unfolds. So the steps we've shown are the standard steps that will lead us to the point where we can make a complete trigonometric substitution no matter what the integral was made up of. And keep in mind, we didn't even care about what was in the integral except for the radical part. The radical part led us to all of this work. So now... I like to rewrite the integral, x to the fifth, the square root of 4 minus x squared, differential dx. 
And we have x to the fifth from Roman numeral step two. X is two cosine of theta. But that needs to be raised to the fifth. The radical part from Roman numeral step one is two sine of theta. And then the differential dx from Roman numeral step two is minus two sine of theta times the differential d theta. So here again is x to the fifth. Here's the radical part. And here is the differential dx. So now let's clean this up. All right, we've got 2 to the 5th. So that's 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Times 2 is 64. Times this negative 2 would be negative 128. So let's gather all the coefficients, bring them out in front. And effectively, what are we left over with? Well, there's 5 powers of cosine. So cosine to the 5th of theta. And then sine times sine, sine squared of theta. So there's our, and don't forget d theta. There's our trigonometric integral. And recall powers of sines and cosines. This is an odd power cosine. So now we use the method from before. So we borrow one factor. Case one of odd sines and cosines. Borrow one factor of cosine from cosine to the fifth. We're left with cosine to the fourth. That factor of cosine that we borrowed, we're going to recopy this sine squared of theta. That factor of cosine that we borrowed, we're going to push over with the d theta. Go so far as to box it off. Write the word save. Recall the idea. <coughs> That is, logical question we could ask would be, if our intent is for this cosine of theta d theta to be our du in the formula for the integral of u to the n, what's the trig function whose derivative is cosine? And that, of course, is sine. So if we could change these remaining factors of cosines to sines, we'll be able to start the u substitution process. We call the identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is 1. So therefore, cosine squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. So we're going to replace cosine squared by 1 minus sine squared theta. That accounts for two factors of cosine. But to account for four factors, recall, we have to square that. And then we have the sine squared of theta and the cosine theta, d theta, that we're saving to make up our du. Okay, now it's time for u substitution. Pick u to be the sine of theta. Again, you know that because we want the cosine theta, d theta, to be our du. So our du is identically cosine of theta, formally. Don't forget differential d theta. So there's no modification by a constant multiple necessary. So here we have 1 minus u squared is a quantity squared, u squared, and identically our differential du. So make the change of variables. Minus 128 integral, 1 minus u squared, quantity squared, u squared, differential du. Remember, before we can integrate, we have to have a sum or difference of terms that are of the form u to the n. So we'll have to expand this. Take it off to the side, foil it if you need to. You know, do the 1 minus u squared times itself. If it's third power, binomial theorem, Pascal's triangle. But just squaring, you get 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth. That's all times u squared and the differential du. So minus 1 over 28 tagging along. Okay, again, before we can integrate, some are difference of terms of the form u to the n. This u squared needs to be distributed. So we get u squared minus 2u to the 4th plus u to the 6th. All with respect to u. 
finally we can integrate so minus 128 and I'll open up some brackets u squared integrates to be u cubed over 3 minus 2 tags long u to the 4th integrates to be u to the 5th over 5 and then plus u to the 6th integrates to be u to the 7th over 7 close up the brackets add a constant of integration I'll distribute the negative 128, so negative 128 over 3, u cubed, this would be positive 256 over 5, u to the 5th, and minus 128 over 7, u to the 7th, plus c, and we'll leave it in terms of u, and remember we have to say what u is. So this is where u is equal to, okay, it was the sine of theta, but that's not enough. Because this was an algebraic integral. So if you're going to leave it in terms of u, not only do you have to tell me what the trigonometric function is in terms of theta, but you also have to tell me what that trigonometric function is in its algebraic form. And here we could actually, excuse me, go back up to Roman numeral step one. But even if we didn't have that, you can go back to the original triangle because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So therefore sine square root of 4 minus x squared over the hypotenuse of 2. And sure, you could put that back in for u and do all the algebra, but obviously that's too tedious. Okay, so that's the method. It works very well. Um, these are the major steps, Roman numeral step one and two. Once you're past that, everything will fall out neatly. Um, okay, so we'll um, cut that short and cut the video short right here. We'll come back and do some more examples, probably two more parts to this um, trig substitution concept.